Welcome back to the Bearable Project. This is episode 115 with Sarah Moore. Sarah is the marketing director for Gas Bow Strings with Mr. Eric Griggs, one of the most amazing companies in our sport. They give back consistently. They pay attention to everyone. And Sarah has met with me to give us the rundown on the new gas bowstring, the recurve plus bowstring, kind of created in collaboration with Brady Ellison. Um, gas has really recognized bare bow and jumped on board with contingency and all kinds of stuff. So enjoy this episode of Catching Up with Sarah so, yeah, and the so giveaway at the end. Don't forget. Growing up as a kid, shooting Joe at years and years and years ago. And then where did you go to school? Um, what for whenever I was at the Lancaster Archery? No, 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 no. college, college. Where did you go to college? Oh, um, the University of the Cumberlands, yes. Okay, so you went to school, shot archery, yes, and now you're working in archery, yes. So, so um, I was a part of of the Joad ever since I was 15 on the Lancaster Joad team. Yeah, where did you Um, grow up? I was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, I was actually the um the first person that they have an academy program and then they have their elite Joad. I was the first person who got invited onto the Joad team without having to go through the academy. Nice. Um so that was pretty cool. I didn't know what was going on until they had told me that there was an academy and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and then uh grew up through that program and then um I got a scholarship to go to the University of the Cumberlands for their archery team, Mm -hmm. shot archery there, continued to practice at the Joad whenever I'd come home. Um, And then I was also working at Lancaster Archery whenever I would come home for um, all my breaks, like all my summer breaks, my winter break, I'd be working at Lancaster Archery, which then that merged into a job at Lancaster Archery Supply. I was their junior video producer. And then um, due to some family reasons, um, we had moved to Kentucky. And then I was offered a job as marketing, or at the time it was marketing coordinator with Gas Bow Strings. And then that um, has become marketing director. So So cool. It's so neat to see see kids that I watched grow up in in my area in the in the pennsylvania eastern pennsylvania area mm-hmm. and then, like to see that kind of transformation from joe ag kid to archery career and you still get to shoot and compete but it's probably like it's got to be difficult juggling a social media marketing uh career for a major company in mm-hmm. i mean as far as string companies can go gas bow strings is pretty much it juggling yeah. that and trying to compete and stuff you know it's it's definitely uh uh, a tough thing but anyways enough of the small talk i'm here with sarah moore from as you can tell by that awesome is that a vest you, you're wearing or it is a vest a, uh <laughs> gas bowstrings uh vest you got going on there uh we we've been talking about this quick connection and kind of talk about the strings because it's like it's hard it's hard to do a podcast and just talk about a product like that definitely can be a little monotonous at times but Mm -hmm. sarah and i text pretty often and then we see posts on facebook and we hear people saying this and they may they want to have this discussion that discussion or and finally like while she was running around like a chicken with her head cut off at vegas (laughs) i was like we we really need to just talk about this and and talk about what kind of opportunities there will be what speaking of opportunities there's going to be an opportunity for those of you watching this to win um uh giveaway of a recurve plus custom bowstring from gas bowstrings we're gonna have to wait till the end to find out about that but anyway so sarah let's talk about the company let's talk about um you know what you guys are are all about and let's talk about this string that is everyone has everyone in such a buzz Absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, Gas Bowstrings is a, a pretty new company. Um, we are um, we are six years um, that we have been in business since last September. Um, and we have quickly grown into the industry's uh, leading aftermarket string uh, manufacturer. 
which is insane to think about, especially just in the success and the growth that we have seen um, last year and the previous year. It's it's been insane um, with the people who have been using our strings, loving our strings, and have been um, like very competitive and successful with them. Um, some of the the main things about gas bow strings that we really want to do is that we want to create the best strings that we absolutely can quality down to the very materials that we use um down to the dynamas that go into these strings um down to how they're colored like how they're colored and what amounts of wax are being put into these strings just so that we can create the top performing strings in the market it's pretty cool i i you don't unless you're i guess maybe unless you're involved in the process like it's hard to understand all of the details that go into it i mean i'm sure it can't be like it's not like building a bow but there's it's still a, it's an extremely important detail and the fact that mm -hmm. you guys are putting so much into every single step just shows that your quality control is on point it's a it's a it's a mm -hmm. a pivotal thing that you concentrate on with every single string that is produced so speaking yes. of in regards to that so you have on the on the yeah well on the what olympic recurve shooters do you have shooting the recurve plus string now besides um, um brady ellison yes well obviously we have brady ellison he helped us with these strings um we worked in conjunction with him to build these recurve plus strings and we absolutely would not have been able to do it without him um Probably. yeah he was very pivotal in these so obviously brady ellison um we also have Gabby Schlosser, who um, she just switched to the recurve plus strings um, and then got second place at Lancaster, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, and then we also have um, Jack Williams, um, uh, Catalina. Um, she has been shooting our strings um, at Vegas. We had just given her a set of recurve plus to put on her bow. So she'll be shooting them as well. And then we've been... Um, um, signing a couple others as well. Outstanding. And then on the Barebo side, mm -hmm. um, kind of first to the table was Robbie Weisinger and Matt Yaka, yes. right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. They, and yeah. I, those were the then, first. And oh, I, and also, and <laughs> yeah, we also had um, Spanky. Those are like the three um, first oh, nice. Barebo shooters. Yeah. Can't go wrong there. The yeah. I, I got <laughs> added by default, so I can't say anything. Um, I appreciate that opportunity as well. As soon as I get to start shooting again, which should be in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I guess let's talk about the string room cells. Let's talk about the the things that, that first of all, we were able to talk about, I should say, um, mm -hmm. you know, that are like pivotal differences that you have focused on that have made this string. So already in its short existence per se, yeah. so successful. <laughs> Yeah, so in just like it's just been out for about two months now and and the attention that is on the recurve plus strings like I mean it's been insane. Um I have one of the um the Barabo um recurve plus strings here. Um each string set will come in its own little tube so that whenever you take it off your bow, you can um you know, you have a protective case to put them in. Yeah. Um, we have our Olympic strings and those are the, that was the first um, basically a string that we had made with the recurve plus. And then we realized that there were some specific needs for the barebow shooters. So then we made a string specifically for those barebow shooters. Um, so here is the recurve plus barebow string. Um, and just right down to the string material, we are using RCX 1200, which is our new patented string mater material, which is um, built by BCY. Um, so we are the only manufacturer who's able to use it. Um, and it's a special blend of two different Dynemas to create this string. Um, and 
what I noticed um, at Lancaster and Vegas is that whenever we would hand these strings over to, um, you know, a recurve shooter or a bare bow shooter, they would instantly start feeling the material and they'd go, wow, this is soft. And that's the whole idea behind these strings is that it's a soft string. It's a soft feel. Um, so you get that, that feeling that you want out of your shot, but at the same time, you're maintaining quality. It's not going to stretch. Um, and, uh, so our loops, we engineered these, um, there are sense tech suppression loops. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera or not, but let me, let they me, bend. Um, let me just do... Let me pin your screen there so I can look at it. All right, let's see it. Is it I, I want to see it. Yeah, so um, I don't know if you can see, but they 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 bend. Yeah. Um, so we don't bring our um, end servings up to the end loop serving. Yeah. Um, so there's a little piece of material in here, if you can see right there, yeah, um, yeah. that is between the end serving and the end loops. This allows for um, more flexibility when you're drawing. Um, it will reduce limb slap whenever you do shoot your bow, and that helps with a, um, a smoother shot. Then we also... Um, serve our end loops here mm -hmm. um, with a softer material um, than what you normally would which I believe would be halo but we we would serve these with a we serve these with a softer material mm -hmm. um, so they are served um, that was one thing that we did a lot of R&D with Brady on because um, you know he wanted that soft feel because uh i believe whenever he was building his own strings he wasn't serving them at all but the problem with that is that when you don't serve your end servings you will um, wear away at your limb tips right. so this way um you know we're not using uh like a braided serving for those end loops which um you know, we'll, we will decrease the soft feel. We're using the softer material. So you get that soft feel, but it protects your limb tips as well. Um, and then just overall, we have our RTS system, which is our recurve plus tensioning system. And that system is, we put a lot of R&D into it. So um, all of the things that we were doing with this string are specifically for recurve archers. We're not building a string um like just building up a string for that we would build for like a compound bow and then just calling it a recurve string we're yeah. specifically building these for recurve archers and then the difference for the bare bow string is that serving the like uh, long center serving <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, good yeah so we are um we are uh, serving this with power grip rather than halo. Um, as some of you may know, the or the um, yeah the halo is um, is shiny and yeah. slippery um, yeah. on your your fingers or your tab or you know whatever. So the power grip has a little bit more grip to it, mm -hmm. um, and then we create it. We create the center serving to be long enough so that it's within regulation. Yeah. That's good. Not many um, up until a few years ago when this that became a thing. Um, John Demmer was definitely the first person to overserve. And when I say overserve, <laughs> I'm talking like his were up here. Oh my uh, goodness! And I mean, but it was there was a little there's a little bit of a dig behind making those strings that way. But that's a that's a that's a separate story, offline. Um, but and. It's nice to see, though, that people are starting to pay attention. Companies are starting to pay attention. They're like, okay, this Barebow thing is real. The growth is real. We're selling products to these people. And Barebow people are different. They're not like compound shooters. Like a compound shooter, they'll, they'll, they'll buy strings, throw them on, and they'll shoot those strings until they can't keep them in tune anymore. Yep. <laughs> Barebow shooters, they will buy a string, and then they'll buy four more because that's just mm -hmm. the way they are just the, and they don't get rid of anything they keep everything um mm -hmm. but they're not afraid to spend money either um <laughs> so it's 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 cool to see that transformation of you know new 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 string company turned number one string company 
also saying, hey, Barabo, we got you. You know, mm-hmm. and we know like the value of Olympic recurve and, and that um, that world. And, you know, by default, you're like, let's go. We, we care about you, too. And that's what's yes. cool about the relationship that we've built. And, you know, just being able to put that out there. Um, mm-hmm. It's exciting. It's exciting to see companies really start to recognize Barabo. And on, I don't know if I'm really the person to say this, but on behalf of Barabo, uh, to you and and obviously Eric as the figurehead, thank you so much yeah. for, for paying that attention and and taking care of people. I mean, absolutely. I, one of the things that, um, especially this year and last year, that we were looking at was, you know, what what markets are we like not taking as much advantage of, or, you know, are kind of missing out a little bit. And we saw this whole like recurve barebow market and we're like, we want to reach out to them. Like, you know, we really want to get to the, that, those communities um, and be able to make something specifically for them that'll, you know, work as well as what they want. Um, but I mean, the recurve process, the recurve plus process has been three years in the making. So oh, wow. I mean, we, we've been, we've been, we've been planning it, but now it's finally just coming into fruition. So <laughs> That's perfect, though. I love it. I think it's great. Um, do you have anybody in your staff out there that works at gas that's shooting bear by chance? So there's a lot of us that are just kind of playing around with bear bow. I oh. shoot bear bow. Um, but for me, it's more of just a fun thing. Um, yeah. And I kind of want to keep it that way because yeah. I've grown up shooting compound yep. and recurves kind of like, like recurve traditional. Um, I shoot um, just like an ILF bow that doesn't have any sights or anything on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, to me, that's just fun. Just me yeah. and the bow. Um, and it's still some time that I can be productive in my practice, but I can still have a lot of fun with it because I'm not that accurate. And when I hit a 10, I'm like, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that was amazing. But whenever I hit a 10 in compound, it's just like business as usual. And you know, yeah. uh, <laughs> you no, know, it's funny. It's funny because that, <laughs> that reaction right there literally is like the definition of the YouTube views from the barebow shoot ups at the classic and the compound mm-hmm. okay now, now compound men's and women's open definitely are up there but like mm-hmm. and were you in the room by chance for the barebow shoot ups this year did you happen to catch that or not i was not i wish oh. i would have because the barebow shoot ups at the classic are the most exciting for me it i love was them wild like i can't... actually well I remember I was at home and my, because I got to, whenever I go up to the classic, since I'm living in Kentucky, I get to visit my parents and they have this gigantic TV that they put the the feet up on. And I was, I was like, you know, cheering everybody on. I was like, go, (laughs) you can do it. (laughs) (laughs) We we were, uh, I had PJ Riley and Matt Zernzak on, and we did an episode. It was like a, it was kind of like a Lancaster archery moments review, like talked about the history of the classic and how it started as the Christmas classic and all the way up to the current, you know, stage and the, the Eric uh, Johnson hitting the 12 and then Raymond mm-hmm. coming back and hitting a nine to win the whole thing. And just that mm-hmm. emotional roller coaster of the whole thing, you know, and I, and I don't care what you say, like there it is, it is just so exciting to watch because Barebow is so like, you don't know what's going to happen. Like somebody it's, could just lose their poop. So difficult. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like, holy crap. It was, you know, there's like, you can't come back from a six point lead compound. You have a six point lead. You're not going to be back from six point lead in compound. Six point lead in Barebow is like one point in compound. Like anything can happen. And yes. I, even that. Everything's that on the table. <laughs> yeah, so but it's um yeah it's just it's amazing to see and I've, i'm fortunate to be involved in it but like over these last six years we're going on six years with the barebow project so like like gas and barebow project sort of like parallel each other um all along the way and i remember talking to eric when the, he first came out he was in a he brought his trailer to s3da 3d nationals like 2000 i want to say 2018 maybe Mm -hmm. um and like when barrel project started i was like hey man you know we should talk and 
and it's what, like, yeah, yeah, you know, we're just starting, but yeah, we'll absolutely will. And Eric's never been one to turn away from trying to help others yeah. or be involved or whatever with it, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever is within his capacity. It's always been yes. that way. And I am just so appreciative of it, except yeah, for the that he didn't show up today for the podcast, but I'll bust his chops on that <laughs> offline. Um, <laughs> But no, it's 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 all good with that. It's that's that's one of the things that we really strive to do, other than making really great bow strings, is that the archery community, since we've started, has given so much to us that we just want to give back. It's awesome. Um, you know, we always we all, we want to, you know, the the kids that are growing up, they're the next generation of archers. We want to support them. You know, we want to be able to put thought into every single um form of archery so that you know everyone's covered everyone has a string that they can be confident shooting in and they know they can do well with um very good so, absolutely I love it are you you have a shooting range there are you at gas right now you got the yes i i'm just in our conference room <laughs> oh okay i was wondering you guys have a shooting range there don't you yes we do mm -hmm. is it how big is it um it's so the range, we, we can get 20 yards in. Um, you can oh. squeeze 25 if you want to. And then we oh, have a little okay. boat shop for all of us um, in the back of it. That's so awesome. That's neat. Yes. I it love is it. very nice. I love it. That's, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like working. It's like work. I don't even know. I got a, yeah. your own personal archery playground, I guess. So yeah, like Lancaster like... archery, but not nah, Lancaster archery. There's a lot of hustle and bustle going on there, you know? Yeah. But on my lunch breaks, I can go and I can, you know, practice. And that's real, that really helps out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's not frowned upon. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, part, it's part of the industry. You got to, you have to be able, it's so good. I love it. Um. All right. Anything else in regards to gas or the bowstrings or any, or w what's going on? Where, Sarah, where can, I know you're, I follow your TikTok. Sarah's, Sarah's experimenting <laughs> with coffee like all the time. But you're like, where can people follow you, not just and gas bow strings? Um, yeah, so I have uh, Facebook, I have an Instagram, although I don't really keep up with my Instagram as much. Um, <laughs> but then I also have a TikTok as well. Um, yeah, and I've posted a couple of videos of um, just like, so, like, so the idea was whenever I was going on TikTok, I was seeing like all these videos of like, you know, day in a life you know yeah. and i'm like i sure. have a, i have an incredible job um not just as marketing director but in the archery industry we're always traveling and i'm you know i i get to do everything in marketing from graphic design to videography photography everything you name yeah. it awesome. um so i was like it would be cool to like film a couple of my my days or me going out shooting or you know whatnot just to kind of like if anyone's interested in seeing what i'm i'm doing then you know you can i have <laughs> a, i have an appreciation for for good social media and you do like the voiceover um day in the life videos and i i love that stuff mm -hmm. the sh you know, the short <laughs> I and sweet. It too. <laughs> it's short and sweet but you don't realize like people don't realize how long it takes to put something like that together like it's not oh yeah it's I, not a five I can't minute tell you thing. how many times I've had to do voiceovers over and over and over again. Do it over and over again. Yeah, I get it. I completely get it because like I've done some vlogs, like I've done them where I'm going to a shoot at Palmyra and, like, I, mm -hmm. and I'll do, it would take me, oh geez, a half hour, 45 minutes of B-roll and like actual recording to come up with a seven minute vlog. Oh, absolutely. Five minute vlog. And I'm yeah. like, and people are like, people see it and they're like, oh, that's so cool. I'm like, it's such a pain and you know <laughs> what, like you don't yeah. realize how hard yeah. the social media stuff is. And then there's people oh, out yeah. there that deliberately try to become content creators. And I was just like, you're crazy. Like <laughs> if, if I could just shoot and just worry about shooting that 100%, the one thing I would do, I'm just too Honestly, far into though, this thing to do that. Like during, whenever COVID happened and we were all just like, you know, at home, not working, that's yeah. whenever, so I have a YouTube channel it's called Anchor Point Passions. Um, I don't really do much with it anymore, but during the COVID, um, 
I wanted to continue shooting archery, but you know, there wasn't anything going on. So there wasn't a lot that was like actually pushing me to shoot. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why don't I just like, you know, I wanted to do this YouTube channel. Like, why don't I just, you know, start it up and do it. Um, and I was seeing my scores increase and I'm like, like, how is this happening? You know, I was talking to my um my well now he's my husband he was just my boyfriend at the time but I was talking to him and I was like I like I don't understand I'm just in my backyard practicing like it's no different than anything else and he's like well you've been you've been filming like how many times have you had to go over and over and over and over and over to film all these things um and I was like oh yeah like I am probably practicing a lot more than what I think I am because <laughs> I'm just I, all I also all think the there's there's some validity to like shooting online, shooting more, recording yourself, shooting, mm -hmm. like you definitely put some more diligence in behind each arrow, um, especially do like live stuff. If you do like, I'll tell you what, you guys, and this is for anybody else out there that owns an archery company that decides archery abroad online tournaments, you know what they are? Yes. I am telling you, if your <laughs> staff at Gas Bowstrings started shooting archery abroad tournaments from the Gas Bowstrings range, that is marketing in itself right there. And then all of a sudden, your archery's getting better. These people are like, yeah, we're shooting. We're coming to you live from the gas bow strings. You could do it. You could stream the live tournament right on your own Facebook page. And people are like, well, what are you doing? Oh, mm -hmm. well, I want to do that. And then, you know, it's, I'm telling you, it's like a, it's a trickle effect. And mm -hmm. we did that during COVID. Same thing in the Barrow Project. I did like online tournaments for people mm -hmm. just to keep people engaged and shooting and, it's stuff you know it, it kind of fizzled out then once everything started opening back up and tournaments started coming yeah. but i mean but there's there's something to it there's definitely teeth mm -hmm. to that and keeping you engaged and keeping you involved and now you're doing it for a prominent uh archery company that we literally see at every tournament so will you guys speaking of that will you guys be what tournaments do you plan as a company to attend um, so right now we're planning on going to all the ASAs. Um, we also will be going to indoor nationals, um, NFA indoor nationals. Um, and what else? We have the ASAs, we have indoor nationals. We went to Vegas and, um, the Lancaster Archery Classic. Um, there might be some of us that show up at Reading. It'll kind of depend on um, where our schedules are at with everything. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. During the summer, we pretty much hit the um, the uh, ASAs, and we may hit a um, a USA and or a USA Outdoor Nationals. Oh, Target Nationals um, down in Texas. So, yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, and plus you have Joe at Nationals in Albuquerque, I think, this year. I don't know. I mean, not that that's not a big sponsorship driven event, though. Um, as rightfully it shouldn't be that it's kid, the kids shouldn't be focused on on that at that age anyway. Um, how about like tall archery challenges, stuff like that? Do you guys do that stuff at all? So we wanted to um, we wanted to do the total archery challenges. Um, a couple of us have talked about going out to them, but I don't really know exactly where we're at with the TAC events. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we, every year we, um, go to, uh, S3DA nationals. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Um, but that's really all I can think of. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> is, has gas bowstrings gotten to the point where contingency may come in the future or anything like that? Have we gotten to that point yet? So currently, um, for contingency, as far as amateur contingency, we're just doing the, the ASAs right now. Um, okay, good. And then, yeah, so we have that, um, we cover all the classes. Oh, so, nice. So um, everyone's covered under that. Um, then the Midwest Open, um, if you, I mean, we we did it last year. I I would think we would do it this year too. Um, yeah, we We do contingency for that competition as well um and we cover all the classes um that's as far as we have gotten um i'm sure there will be a discussion about some adding some other competitions in there we just haven't really fully discussed that yet no and i get that it's not it's it's not easy to cover contingency that's a big chunk of, it has the potential to be a big chunk of change in one crack and especially when you're 
e not equally paying out per se, but equally covering all classes. Um, like it's it doesn't and and I don't care who you are out there, it doesn't make sense to give Verbo the same amount of money as the men's pro division in ASA. It's just not how it works. Um, but you know, some people will, and I don't I have no idea what your contingency amounts are, and it doesn't matter. We don't have to talk about that. <laughs> People want to talk about that. I'll put it in the comments on YouTube. Um, but it, you know, but it's cool, and I I appreciate that you guys are are actually willing to do that in some format, especially with the ASAs, because those are going to grow, continue to grow this year. I know I plan to get to a couple of those myself because mm -hmm. I am not going to Texas for Target Nationals <laughs> because I don't I don't believe I, I it's not in the works right now. Let's just put it that way. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's awesome. You guys are doing contingency and everything. I mean, it's it's things are going in the right direction. But I guess that's kind of it. We kind of covered everything and then some. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's always wonderful to catch up. I think uh, everybody should watch out for Sarah on TikTok because her voiceover <laughs> little mini vlogs are pretty fun. Um, and make sure you guys go check out Gas Bowstrings and all the all the social media platforms, Facebook. I'll make sure all that stuff is in the show comments as well or the details of the show, um, Instagram and everywhere else. Okay. Rock on. Good. <laughs> We're going to end this one. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Sarah, you. Hang, out, hang out for one second. Is that <laughs> it in? Um, that, yeah, everyone I keep talking, Robbie said the same thing. I talked to a couple Olympic shooters. They said the same thing. Like the shot feels different. What, is that what, what do you, what do you know? What what are you hearing? So the interesting thing about these strings, and like I said, I am beginner, as beginner as you can get in Barebo, I am a beginner. <laughs> I am like very entry level. I will not like hitting a 10 is like, I don't even know, but I, I don't shoot very many of them. <laughs> but um Whenever I drew back my own bow with these strings on them, I felt the difference. Just hmm. even me at the most basic level you can possibly be, I pulled the string back and I was like, what? <laughs> like, this is different. And the best way I can describe it is that they're smooth. But that word doesn't quite describe yeah. exactly how it feels it okay. just feels good and you know it feels good but you don't know how to describe it so, and then yeah. whenever you release the string that also feels different um i'm pretty sure it has something to do with the vibration dampening that's going on with disregard the that disgustingly loud noise that was uh um my fire pager i apologize oh. <laughs> but yeah they feel they feel very different yeah um and then the other interesting thing that um i actually found out whenever we were product testing and because we once we had created the olympic strings um we were like oh well you know we should you know the bear like our barebo pro staff archers were shooting them and they're like hey well you know these strings are great we feel the difference we love the difference but you know they're not specific like we need a little something different for barebow. So we started doing a little bit of product testing on some, what we can do for the barebows. And then whenever I was shooting a, my bow and I was starting to string walk, I was like, Hey, like, I don't know if this is how everyone else's bow is, but whenever I move my hand down on the string, the pressure on my fingers changes. Yeah. Um, with these strings, it doesn't change. It's the That's same. Wild. same pressure incredible and it may, if, if that's if that i can't wait to shoot them um uh, if that's the case then you know you guys have something real real special on your hands literally i think so yeah. yes <laughs> all right good stuff um so listen we're gonna do a giveaway of for gas bow strings so this will be episode 115 um, and now that you've gotten to the end of that episode you're gonna find out this is what you need to do to get entered to win a, a set a custom set of recurve plus gas bow strings brady ellison barabo version we'll call it, i don't want to call him the robbie weisinger version but well whatever well i know robbie, specs, <laughs> he robbie was played a role in the, in, in the specs of those strings so yes. uh we'll give robbie some some credit there so 
we're going to make sure that there's got to be some social media following going on here. So obviously you better be following the Barrel Project for those of you who want to get entered. The, all of you have to go over to Gas Bowstrings YouTube and subscribe there. That link will be in the show comments. You can just click on it and go click sub subscribe. Comment on this episode on YouTube. Done. We'll cross-reference it. <laughs> and then we're going to pick somebody and give away a pair of strings. And we'll reach out to you um, either through YouTube and, and let you know there. And uh, or if I know you personally, I'll shoot you a private message on Facebook. So sound good, Sarah? Sounds good. Perfect.